Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the XL Runo Rodriguez in the Ultra League. We got some battles sent to me because I actually don't have one myself, but I definitely want to build one as soon as I get the XL candy, which should be available during the Halloween event. But yeah, today we're going to take a look at two different teams for Runo Rodriguez in the Open Ultra League, which is going to be very interesting here because yeah, this Pokemon is actually really cool in the current meta. Being able to beat Cobalion completely is going to be very good. As you're going to see actually in the first game, this is not scripted. I didn't look at the games at all so I don't even know what's going to happen here and this is kind of ridiculous getting the Cobalion immediately on you here going to be able to still go for the Shadow Ball sadly Santum is a cool bait move but in those scenarios it's just not really that greatest move to go for so here we see the Shadow Ball going through which is doing way more damage here you can go for a Santum now though if you want to or you're just going to go for the full farm down or you're just going to try to seam Peter here which you're going to lose is the seam Peter yeah it's kind of unfortunate but still totally fine Bruno really this is a very bulky Pokemon, which is really cool and also very unique. So here we will see also the charge move carrying through against the opponent's Greninja. Doing actually way more than I thought. Greninja is just way too squishy for this meta. It is absolutely wild. We see the Shadow Ball getting the knockout and in the back we're going to see Verizian, which would have to go up against the Pidgeot, of course. Next game, we're going to encounter the Greninja again here. This time around here as well in the lead, where we're going to see either Brave Bird or Feather Dance. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a bait game here. As you decide to shield this move up, it's fairly likely that the opponent is going to expect you to go for the Feather Dance here. And let's see if they're going to let it go through or if you're going to get their shield. They're going to let it go through. I feel like that was kind of an obvious one. But also, Ampharos is now up against the Aruna Rigas. And I'm curious about this matchup because Ampharos could learn a Trailblaze but also be Brutal Swing. But still, you will be able to take two Brutal Swings with your Aruna Rigas while the fast move does no damage from the opponent. Allowing you to easily realign your Pokemon even though they have super effective damage against you. Which is going to be nice for you. As well as you're going to still be able to even go for a Shadow Ball. Which as you saw before does actually quite a lot of damage against Greninja which is gonna put them into range for just one fast move and I like the play of going into the Pidgeot because this will allow you to get rid of this Pokemon here as well as you can go for the Feather Dance and guarantee that this debuff is never gonna get off the opponent's um, Venusaur so you can even just stay in use another shield here if you wanted to but you decide to let it go through and go into your Cabellion it's also fine they're going to fall for it, which is fine. I would have mostly stayed in and tried to go for another debuff onto the opponent just to force another shield as well as having the opponent four times debuff, which is just funnier. But it's totally fine to play it like this. Clefable in the lead. It's going to be also interesting. We will see the Feather Nets coming through. They're going to no shield because they didn't really have a reason to shield there anyway. And we will see the Media Mesh coming through, doing not as much damage anymore, which is really good for you. But still, they're going to chunk quite a bit. And now we can get either the shield or the knockout. Let's see what they're going to do here. They're going to shield this move up, which was kind of expected. And we will see the shield coming up against the Moonblast, which is going to, uh, of course, going to be fine for you. As you're going to use a Seisop swap of Cobalion here, I think this is your Seisop swap in general for this team. I would not recommend you to say swap the um, Runo Regis at all. I feel like this is a bad Pokemon to say swap into because there are quite a lot of weaknesses for the typing of Ground plus Ghost. Here we're going to see the Skeledurge, which is actually an interesting Pokemon as well. I really enjoy this Pokemon quite a lot in the Ultra League. Very cool to counter those um, Cobalion plus Verizian, which of course in your case is kind of bad for you. But you can still go ahead and go for Charge Move there, or you're just going to let this move go through. I guess you can de definitely survive a Disarming Voice. I would have tried to go for the Charge Move before the opponent gets to their own Charge Move, because now they could realign, but they decide not to, and there is a Greninja in the back. So this is a forfeit for sure. Next opponent coming through, horrible lead for you but you can swap out here but you don't really want to i don't know like this is a little bit awkward you're going to catch the move here onto your cobalion great play there but again you're going to have the ground type there in the back but it's not going to do really ground type damage so that's kind of awkward as we will see the giratina coming in here going for the dragon claw immediately most likely they're running ancient power plus dragon claw so going to be interesting matchup here you can go for the neutral stone edge but still dragon breath is just chunking so so fast off, off your health here as we see the dragon claw doing some decent damage we will go ahead go for another stone edge but as we will see they still need another one and i don't think you're gonna get to another one which is actually wild like the opponent's giratina is only throwing resisted moves and still going to be able to knock you out before you'll get to the stone edge i want to say that was really close but you're forced to kind of go into your Runa Regis here because you need some extra energy in order to deal with the um, Sand Slash. So you have to hope that now the opponent goes into their Sand Slash here 
and hope that you can still deal with it, but they decide to go into the Galissa pot and this is game. I don't think there's a way of you winning this game. This, I think, is only an aerial ace, is it? Yeah, it is only an aerial ace, but you still have to kind of shield this move up. Like, yeah, there's nothing that, that you can do here. It's, I'm, I would be curious if this actually is something that you can still do in this matchup. You can still try, at least, to go for the debuffing move here against the opponent with Feather Dance. Still, like, Brave Bird does around 50% HA from this health, which is kind of funny, even though it is resisted, but, um... Honestly, it looks so, so bad for you. You're going to wait until the opponent throws their move because they can survive another one before the Brave Bird, which is smart. But let's see. We will see the Brave Bird coming through here. This is going to be such an uphill battle. The opponent is going to decide to shield. You can still go for another one. But they still have the Golis support in the back anyway. So here we see the Brave Bird coming through. We're going to get the shield. You can swap out. You can throw the move in time. But I don't think this is going to get the knockout here yet either, right? Yeah, it doesn't. The opponent swaps into the Golis support. You're going to go ahead and go for your um, Sand Tomb, which is going to do some decent damage. But you're going to be forced to use a shield here. And I think the Sand Slash has a move stored. But it was way closer than they expected. So that's totally fine. They survived with 1 HP, so great way of playing this one out. I guess you did the best to what you could do here, but it was still a little bit awkward. Next opponent, great lead for you here at least. We're going to see the Jellison against you on the lead, which is something that usually Pidgeot can win fairly easily, as we will see the Surf coming through. We will going to now see um, the uh, Feather Dance, which is going to drop the opponent's attack. And we also see the Swap out into the Drapion, which you can at least retaliate with Cobalion, which is a great way of destroying like those um, yeah, Drapion in general, especially as it seems like that they are running Sludge Bomb plus Crunch, so you can resist everything from the opponent and you can just go for another sacred sword and farm them down afterwards so you're in a great spot here getting a lot of energy getting rid of the drapian which would be a little bit tricky for your runerigas in the back and this is also the last game by the way for this team afterwards we're going to swap the team a little bit as we will see the sacred sword gonna get the knockout against the opponent Let's see what's coming in. We're going to see the Jellison coming back in here as we see the Stone Edge connecting, which does around like 30%, I would say. And yep, and maybe a little bit more than 30%, but we see another Stone Edge coming through. This is going to hopefully put them into the red health. And now you can farm them down with a Pidgeot. And again, a Pidgeot is so overpowered if you can realign your Pokemon. Because now the opponent has one Pokemon left. And you can... Okay, you can also go into Rune Regis, which completely hard was Toxic Croak. But you could have also went to your um, yeah, Pidgeot there and tried to go for the debuffing move. But it's still going to be fine. You're definitely going to be able to win this final game here. There is nothing the opponent can do anymore. And we will see even another shield coming up here. I don't know what they really try to do because like Mud Bomb is going to do like what 30% maybe? Yeah, not even really. And we can just see that you do so much damage with your fast move plus the Santum here getting the um yeah drop again. We're gonna see the full farm down in the gels and is still trying to throw a move, which does not matter. You're gonna go for the two shield flex, which I respect here. But yeah, the opponent has no chance of winning this game, so I don't know why they didn't give up yet. So next team, we're going to have here a little bit of a different one. We're going to see a purified Charizard, which is sadly not running return, but we're going to see now the um, normal Charizard, the Shadow Variant coming in here. I like the normal Charizard a little bit more than the Shadow Charizard in this current meta. So here we will see the swap out into the Runerigas. You can definitely take a Blast Burn, but you're going to use a shield still to try to keep your Runerigas alive. I guess this is going to be just a Dragon Claw, most likely. No, it's actually a Blast Burn already. Like, honestly, Charizard is just so crazy in terms of spending those charge moves. But at least you can realign. Venusaur comes in. You can go for a bait first, and you can still reach a Shadow Ball afterwards, which is a smart idea here to drop the defense first and now get either the Shield or nearly the Knockout. And we see Nick nearly the Knockout coming through here, as it can completely hardwall the opponent in this matchup. There's nothing that they can do about it. There is literally nothing that they can do at this point of time, as you can just spam those Leaf Blades. Unless maybe they're running a slot wave and going to hit you for like hard damage here but no they're going to run hydro pump of course hydro pump hydro cannon of course plus the earthquake as we will see the hydro cannon coming through again you can just go for two leaf blades knock out the swamp bird win this game and we can now move on afterwards into the next one sc opponent still wants to go for another hydro cannon but like literally there's nothing they can do like even your charizard is going to be able to beat the swamp bird at this range so we will see the Leaf Blade getting the knockout, and the Venusaur is taking the loss. Next opponent coming up, are we going to encounter here? It's Charizard against Jellicent. Horrible lead for you, so you're going to be forced to swap out into your Verizian eventually, but I guess you want to try to get some extra energy and then swap out. Does not really work out too well, but I guess maybe the opponent actually threw a Surf here. That would be funny, but now it's just going to be a Shadow Ball. As they're going to get, be able to catch the move here onto their Manda Boss. This is looking like a very tough one. But luckily, you're going to get out the Manda Boss for your uh, Ronald Regis in the back. But sadly, they're running the move Air Slash, which is, I guess, like, it's not that rare in the Ultra League, to be fair to see Air Slash. But it's very bad for you right now, because... 
Yeah, like, uh, this Pokemon was just able to farm on the Eurasian, and if they wouldn't run Air Sashi, you would still be able to at least run the Snarl, so they have to go for Aerial Ace, and here this is going to be a little bit more tough. You're forced to use a shield here, there is nothing that you can do against a mana boss with your Runerigas and the opponent decides to swap out, which again is not really ideal as the opponent can still go for a charge move here, it's going to be the Shadow Ball, you can still survive it for sure, but you are forced to go for another Shadow Ball here. Basically, the only way of you winning this game is if they are insanely weak against Charizard in the back, which I don't think they are with a Gyarados there, so this is going to be definitely a loss as there is not a lot that you can do about it. You're gonna still go for the shield here, but I don't know. Like, if you can still land a Blast Band right now, okay, you can't even do it. Because the opponent would have still had the defense drop there, which would have been cool. But you're forced to try to farm them all the way down here, and you're going to survive with a few HP left. But you can just go for one charge move here, which is not going to do too much for you as the opponent decides to shield it up, of course. So, moving on into the next game, we're going to encounter the uh, Shadow Obama Snow, a Pokemon that you rarely really see. Fairly decent lead for you, especially as a Charizard compared to the Pidgeot prior, because Charizard is going to be able to take those moves a little bit easier. We will see the Dragon Claw spam most likely, as this is going to do some decent damage. But you are still going to be forced to use a shield here because, yeah, the opponent still gets to another weather ball in time. So it's actually not the best matchup for you. You're going to not be able to farm them down all the way. You have to throw a charge move. This is the only way here. And you can still at least realign, which is cool for your backline. But, oh, we're going to see the Drift Blim in the back. This is a bad. This is really bad because you have nothing to hit him with. Okay, that's great that you at least were able to hit the land, uh, the uh, blast burn there. Because otherwise you would have had definitely a little bit of a tough time. They're gonna go for the icy wind spam there as well, which does not really matter to you. They can go for a shadow ball just in case, so the opponent doesn't get to a move before. But I like this all. Like the opponent doesn't even throw. That's amazing. You're going to still be able to go for a shadow ball here, but you have to go for the Santum, I feel like ah. I would have went for the Santum bait because the likelihood of you going for a Shadow Ball is fairly high. And this would have allowed you to get to Leaf Blades, like do a little bit more damage with Leaf Blades in general. So I would have went for the bait here instead because as you can see here, if you just got the defense drop against the opponent, you would have two shot them with Leaf Blade at this point. So it's a little bit awkward. I would have done a little bit differently and I think it would have been a little bit better like this. But here you see that the opponent just going to let all the moves go through. You're forced to go for two Santums now anyway. So that's going to be a little bit of a tough one. But you. Oh, he's still gonna go for the full farm down. This is even riskier here. So you were still able to win this game. I would have played way differently there. I think it would have been way easier to go for the Santum first, go then swap out into the Verizian, get the defense drop onto the opponent, do more damage with the Leaf Blade, and would have been in such a better spot. But definitely something that I would have played way, way differently towards what you did there. But we will see here now a Greedon against you. You can just go for the Sacred Sword against the opponent's Greedon, which will allow you to do a lot of damage. You're still going to need another one. Greedon is honestly so broken. This Pokemon is just so broken in the Ultra League. But I always, when I played, it's really bad for me, so that's kind of it. We're going to see the Ruizing coming back in. They could run the move um, Stone Edge here, so you have to be a little bit careful with your chairs out, but they will be able to farm you down after this incoming Sacred Sword, so that's going to be a little bit awkward. I don't think they're going to go for a charge move here. No, they're going to go for the full farm down, as you can go for another charge move yourself. Sacred Sword is coming through, as we will see the Steelix coming up here, which is going to encounter now the Rune Rigas. I'm actually curious about this matchup. It's actually not a good matchup for Rodriguez, I would say. Because um, your main damage is here going to be from the Shadow Ball, which they're going to shield up anyway. And Sandum is not really going to do too much damage, and the opponent going to debuff you the entire time. So it's a tricky one. You are getting a shield advantage here at least, but I guess you're just going to save everything up for the Charizard, which does make a lot of sense here. So you're going to just wait until the opponent throws another charge move, which they won't do here. They're just going to stay in. And here it might have been better for you to swap out with a Shadow Ball Stored because you were so debuffed. So I'm not sure. Like, this is going to be a very tough one to still win. We will most of you see quite a lot of gameplay here still for this battle. Is um this is going to take a little bit of a while because the opponent has so much energy onto their chair and to their um, Steelix here. They're just going to be able to spam those breaking swipes the entire time, which is going to be interesting. As we will see, no shield coming up for the next one. We are also going to now see that the, you are over farming quite a bit here. Last one coming through, gonna get the knockout, and I guess now at this point, hopefully the Rizian is going to, yeah, get completely destroyed by the Blast Bond, and we can move on into the final game of the Ultra League session here right now, which is going to be so nice. I know a lot of people did not like this week at all, like I saw an insane drop in viewership this week, which is... 
Yeah, it's kind of sad, of course, to see, like, but I, it was kind of expectable. Like, I honestly, like, there's no good event in the game right now. There is no good cup in the game right now. So tomorrow we're going to see a lot of more Great League gameplay again. I have actually some Great League gameplay still from the last time Great League was around, which is literally just last week, as far as I remember. So um, this is going to be most likely for tomorrow, plus later on today. Definitely check that one out. We're going to have another top team tier list for, or, like, top team video for the... Um, great league again with face game by the way for like those people that liked it last time around not sure about this one yet by the way but um we're going to see uh 20 legend teams from this season which is kind of wild so like i w went ahead and collected 20 different legend teams that got to legend with uh, the great league in this season which is really cool so definitely check that one out when it comes out later on but here we're gonna now see the aruna rigas getting to a centum against a call fable which is gonna take this next boom blast here going to do some decent damage reward We'll see the shadow ball which is going to do hopefully a ton of damage as well going to get the final shield of the opponent and i guess you're going to oh you're going to have a great matchup in the back you're going to have virilian against cobalion this is like the justice trio duo team up here which is gonna go ahead and go for the sacred sword which is hopefully going to do some decent damage against the opponent as we will see here that you he can do super effective damage against the opponent which is going to be just so much nicer for you you're just gonna go for another sacred sword here gonna get the knockout and now it's only down to the club fable which you should be able to easily knock out anyway and they decide to forfeit so that's going to be it for today's video hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to leave a like and i'll see you later for the top team video bye bye